Hey Virgo, welcome to your tarot session. I really want to say happy birthday to all my Virgo sons. I want to say happy new moon and your sign. We just experienced it last night. So the energies are still echoing for a few days. I would even say for the rest of the week easily. Uh, this is a fabulous time for you, but be nice to yourself because yes, I believe it's a fabulous time, but it could be a very activating time for you. Um, you're getting older, you're getting wiser. And of course, this reading is for anyone who connects with the Virgo energy, not just the Virgo suns, but let's celebrate the Virgo, the magic of Virgo this whole month of September. Um, Virgo season teaches us so much. It really invites us to take action, to honor that every action we took in the past, it shaped us, it made us who we are, but that all the actions we're gonna be taking creates you know, the best aligned future for us. Um, we are more in control than ever, I believe, in Virgo season really is a time to kind of start fresh. It feels like a new year and I love it. I love it. You guys know how much I love you and I obviously love Virgo season. But September is challenging. Always was. But still, again, um, it, it's my job to hold space for your magic and for the possibilities. So this is what we're going to do. So... Let's see, Virgo, what is the general energy for you in September? Oh, yes. Yeah, you are cultivating something, nurturing something. The queens in the tarot are all about nurturing. So I think that you're going to feel invited to maybe change something, maybe add new things to your daily routine, your daily schedule to maybe clear out the dead roots. You know, when I think about nurturing and the queens in general, I think about a garden always. All court cards to me are connected to the garden, to nature, cycles of nature in a way. So queen of pentacles, by nurturing, she adds new seeds, but she also rips out the old roots. She digs deep. She gets, you know, messy in a way, but she is present and grounded. So there's this beautiful balance here. It's not obsessive. It's peaceful, but it can be quite passionate. And I'm thinking about this new moon that, again, we just experienced. This is a new moon in Virgo, baby. It is your ultimate new beginning. What do you want? What do you want the most? It's here. It's yours. You're getting it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Are you serious? Emperor and Hermit. So... The emperor is a new beginning. It's the first sign of the zodiac. And hermit is you. So if there's something you want to start fresh, and clearly you're going to be cultivating, working on something this whole month, working on some type of new beginning, getting adjusted, clearing out your schedule, readjusting, adapting your flexibility, all of that is going to be so important. There is a place for you. I just said, you get it. You get the job. You get the invitation. You get the green light. Because not only you know it's time for you to take up space, but you understand there is a place for you. And the emperor is wise. But he still carries the excitement of new life. He's the first sign of the zodiac. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So emperor is very wise again, but it's, it's like the primal scream of a newborn. So something begins very early in the month for you. Something that will be in your life for at least a decade. 
It is a long lasting new beginning. And if the queen of pentacles also confirms that how you're going to be nurturing something for a very long time. It's exciting. It's again, you're passionately yet peacefully moving through that. It makes sense. It is the logical next step for you. So Hermit is about the present moment, always. And it's very interesting because you are ruled by Mercury. Mercury is the mind, nervous system, and the mind loves to time travel. So you're going to doubt. Okay, but I'm getting this thing. There's a green light, but should I press on the gas pedal? Should I take my time? Is this really where I'm supposed to be? Is this actually meant for me? So of course you're going to doubt it. Of course. But you are invited to stay present as always, which is not just a September thing, not just a Virgo thing, but a human thing. But for Virgo, it is essential that you stay present because again, your mind will always want to time travel. What's being offered to you, and again, this green light that's showing up in your life very early in the month, it's part of your destiny, it's part of your life's path. And it's beginning this, again, I'm hearing a decade-long cycle of stability, abundance. It feels comfortable, but it comes with a lot of dedication, it comes with a lot of hard work, and I think you understand that, and you understand the value in that. Oh, yeah, Seven of Pentacles is here. And I had no idea this card was there. For some reason, I felt like I had to talk a little bit more before uh, looking at it. Again, you understand the value of your dedication because probably that this green light comes from your hard work and dedication you being of service, you showing up day after day. It's weird. It feels like for the past few months, you kept hearing, uh, just another week, Virgo. Yeah, just just another a month. Okay, just another season, just another this and that. You're like, when am I going to get the clear answer? When am I going to get this new beginning that I keep feeling and hearing about? It feels like someone made you a promise in a way. I don't know why there's the word promise that feels important. And you did not want to get attached to this promise. You needed to see it to believe it. And that's what's happening here. But yeah, it requires a lot of investment from you time a lot of time a lot of energy which is your currency obviously but you will be fairly compensated it comes with a lot of again stability structure in your schedule structure in your day-to-day -day, and that keeps you mentally stable that keeps you healthy and ha dare i say happy dare i say happy so something is definitely changing about your schedule. There's a confirmation. There's a green light. And your job is going to be to receive and accept that this is your time. I'm getting emotional now because I know this is, is it's not easy for you Virgos to accept Look at that. Lover's card is here. Another card ruled by Mercury. This is about communication. So there could be a lot of back and forth like, okay, we need to adjust more details. And then again, your mind will time travel. Why is this so complicated? I just want to have a clear yes and never look back and never ask myself any questions again. It's part of this whole process. It, it really feels like the universe is testing you right now, Virgo. Do you really want this? And I think you do. And it's so interested that I, it's so interesting to me that I said, 
you know, dare I say, uh, happy, like, dare I say you will love your life, you will love this new schedule, you will adapt to it beautifully, and the lover's card is here. You called in something. You manifested this. It's like you threw a wish in the universe. You did not want to jinx it. You were like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't. Let me just do my thing. Let me stay present. And then it comes back like a boomerang. And it hits you right in the heart. You're like, wow, okay. Now I have to work on receiving. Why does it feel so uncomfortable that I'm the chosen one here? I don't know. It's like you need to open your heart. You're invited to open your heart. And there could be also some type of clearing that's happening with the hangman. Hangman is connected to Pisces, the last sign of the zodiac. So there's a cycle that begun, it, it began not too long ago and it's already over. There's already the clearing that's happening. So you're dealing with a lot of endings and new beginnings and you're having to adjust to a new reality. It's not easy. It's not easy. Adjusting to a new reality. So it means a different schedule. It means, you know, probably more people to handle, different people to handle, um... I don't know why I'm getting this message of like being surrounded by kids, <laughs> having like more youth around you, more kids. It takes a lot of adaptability and flexibility, but it is important. You will learn so much about yourself through this period of change. The hangman is... The rebel of the tarot. I've always felt that way. I've always, um, I always thought this card in that way as a tarot teacher. Like the hangman chose to be in that position. It looks uncomfortable to others. That's the thing. We're working with perception with that card. Um, the way people perceive you is not how you perceive yourself. There's something here about being challenged, seeing yourself through the eyes of another person or kind of obsessing over how this person, how this group of people perceive me. And there's no connection between the two. Um, and the best example I can give you here to make myself like, I really want to be clear with this download I'm getting. For example, you interact, you know, with a romantic partner, let's say, and in your mind, they perceive your body, they perceive you in a certain way, but that's you, <laughs> you know, that's your own thing. You don't know how they're going to perceive you. So here there's the exploration of newness. The exploration of new territories. And to not step in this new beginning with a preconceived idea. This is how I've always been. This is how it all it has always been with other with others. And no, this is completely new. And I remember not long ago, I did a reading for you and it was uh, called like the complete renovation of your life's path. This is a continuation of that reading. I'm pretty sure it is. I will link this, this reading um, in the description box. I feel like for some of you, it could be a very important thing to go back to this. Your life's path has been renovating. And now there's a completely new reality that you have to adjust. You know, let's say metaphorically you leave your house and you hand a key and you're like, okay, do the renovation, mister. And then when I'll come back, everything will be different. So I'll, I'll have to readjust like, where are the light switches? Where are, you know, the different things and 
I feel like this is what's happening here. Your brain is going to invite you into fear. Like you don't know, you have to relearn everything and you might feel like you're not good enough. You're not supposed to know everything the first day. You're not receiving a guide, an instruction guide on how to move in this new beginning. You will learn as you go. And that is a very big and important message for you in September. You will learn as you go. And two of cups is here. So this whole thing feels very much connected to the material, your job, your schedule, your paycheck, uh, what you do on a day to day. And the two of cups shows up. And you might not know it now. It might be very hard to comprehend in this moment, but this new beginning, which again feels so connected to the material in a way, to the physical world in some way, and pentacles, it's leading you to a space of radical self-love. You're going to be so proud of yourself. You're going to be so proud that you never gave up, that you chose to explore something different. You chose to honor your intuition. Virgos are incredibly intuitive, but your intuition comes a lot from your body. And body wisdom is very, very hard to navigate because sometimes we're like, am I nervous? Is this like me catching onto a red flag? Why is my stomach hurting in that way? Why am I shaking? Why am I feeling, you know, specific things coming up in my body? I think that this wisdom, again, that you experience physically is so much more work. It really is hard to adapt to and hard to catch on to and understand. Because, of course, you know, our bodies could be telling us so many different things related to our health, related to, you know, anything. But there's something about your intuition that you're really becoming a master at. Again, this thing that you were so afraid to jinx, it's like there was this, there, those little moments where you dared believing, you were hoping, you were like, yeah, maybe I really deserve that. And that was the entry point of more self-love. And now the Two of Cups is here, which to me is radical self-love. To accept ourselves as is, as we are right now in the present moment. And this whole new beginning is initi initiating everything to change like everything about you is ready to improve and it's so much more emotional and deep than what it looks like on the surface two of wands is here six of cups yeah and the king of pentacles it's so much deeper than you know. So this is just the first door that's opening for you. It's the first yes. It's the first layer of that success, of the potential. In September, there are kind of new possibilities and different layers that are starting to show themselves to you. Again, the process is very internal, personal, and intuitive for some reason. But again, it's always coming back to the material aspect. You really thrive when you have a clear schedule, when you know exactly what you're going to be doing for the next year, the next two, three, four. Again, I believe this is a 10-year new cycle that begins. It could be work, it could be a relationship, it could be that you found a house, it could be a different title, you are stepping in a position of authority, clearly. You go from the queen of pentacles to the king, there's the emperor, the hermit. Listen, 
again, your perception right now is probably, okay, now I'm going to feel secure. But there are so many layers to, the, to that change and the benefit and, and the positivity and the beauty that it will bring into your life. It's opening the door to so many new emotions, so much more clarity, love, and gifts. Gifts from not only the universe, but your own intuition. You're trusting in your wisdom fully. And wisdom really comes from taking action. You know, and, and by taking action, we we kind of discover who we are, like self-discovery, knowing ourselves. It comes from taking action and doing different things, meeting people and work, especially. I believe that work is so important for wisdom and self-discovery, but there is something here like a deeper layer of wisdom. You are wise, secure, older, but wiser. And there's so much acceptance here and so much celebration of that beauty. Six of Cups is a card of healing. It's when we are able to truly be of service and support others because we've been through so much, because we understand ourselves so much more. And it's interesting how there's always a person offering a cup full of flowers. And usually in the tarot, the cups are empty. But in the Six of Cups, there's always flowers there. And that's a very important symbol. I think that, again, you will step in a position of authority and you will help other people. I felt like there was something about kids, about younger people. I say kids, but it could be people that are younger than you. Maybe you're at a point in your life where you feel like everyone is younger than you. Um, and, you know, I'm just joking, but it, it feels like there's something about youth and you feeling youthful again in a way that you haven't felt in a very long time. It comes from very, very deep challenges. It, it's not like... It has been easy for you in the past few months. It hasn't been easy. I think you've been fighting against your own mind a lot. And you're finally entering a period that feels so much more comfortable. So much more aligned with your values and how you want to spend your time. And again, your energy, your currency. Is there a clear message for Virgo? A clear message that we haven't received yet. What could be helpful for Virgo as they navigate this new beginning? Queen of Cups. Your vulnerability, baby. Your vulnerability, which I know... Um, Sometimes you can perceive as weakness and the chariot is here again. So it's all about vulnerability. So the first thing that comes up when I see the Queen of Cups is opening up. In the traditional version of this card, which we don't see it here, but in the Rider Waite Smith, the cup of the Queen of Cups is always closed. And the Queen of Cups represents the deepest parts of us. She's like the deepest parts of the oceans, the monsters that hide in the ocean, the things that we did not even discover yet as human. It is secrets. What is hidden? Sometimes our subconscious also, the subconscious aspect of certain things. You're invited to really share about everything. To... Put words into certain feelings is going to be so essential for you. Write about it. Talk about it. Um, who is that person that you can share anything with? Everything and anything. Find that person. Reach out to them. Open up. Because 
again, it's, it's not easy for you to receive. And this is going to be a huge, huge, huge challenge for you in the month of September. Receiving so much abundance, so much newness. It's going to challenge you, Virgo. And I know that because the emperor was your first card out. Emperor is nothing without the empress. So you know that when you see the emperor in a reading and there's no empress around, we need to work with the Venusian aspect. And to me, Ven Venu v Venus, Venus, the Venusian energy to me is the foundation of it is receiving. The foundation of the empress to me is receiving. It is not easy for you in September. You're going to feel some days like you're not worthy of this. You're going to feel like um, you don't belong there. Why me? Why now? All those questions are going to come up. And that's why the hangman is at the heart of this reading. How can you make sure that you don't isolate yourself because of what you're feeling? That there's nothing wrong with you because you're kind of dealing with the messy feelings. You're going to be asking yourself more than once in September, what is wrong with me? I'm getting everything I wanted and still I'm critiquing. Still I'm not happy. Still I'm asking more questions. That is part of who you are. That is an essential part of the Virgo energy to constantly critique, to constantly dig deeper and ask more questions. It is not a curse. It is not a negative thing or a negative trait about you. It is what makes you you. You better learn to collaborate with that inner critique, to not constantly try to shut it off and suppress this and, and suppress it and hide it away. That's what you've been doing. It feels like you've been pushing away certain feelings, certain doubt, because you feel like they don't have a place. It's not the time. It's again, I'm getting what I wanted. So why am I feeling so emotional about this? Why is it so hard for me to receive? Because it's one of the hardest things for humans to do. Receiving is so complex. And every time I talk about that, I know that, you know, some people are like, well, I love receiving gifts and I love receiving compliments. Yes, but you will feel like you have to give one in return. You will feel like you need to give a gift in return to. It's just humans. We are that way. So the chariot comes up and the chariot is about something that we have outgrown. We identify this chariot because this card is called the chariot, not the charioteer. It's about the container. It's about an energetic graduation. You're graduating to the next level. You're not going to fit into old beliefs. You're not going to fit into the same type of circumstances and maybe the same group of people. You have outgrown a lot of things. And you definitely outgrown this part of you that kept pushing away certain feelings. The part of you that kept pushing away. I think that for some of you, it could be the dark aspect of you, like the darkness and for others, it could be the light. Uh, I think it's it's different for each and every one of you. I cannot put you all in the same category. It doesn't work that way and it doesn't make sense. I feel like there is something here that, again, about the Ven... V, um, v, why am I having such a hard time saying Venus? It's like I want to say it in French. The Venus and Mars aspect... Um, the yin, the yang, the darkness and the light, everything working together. You understand that both work together. That one doesn't come without the other. And there is this huge revelation around that. It sounds very basic right now. 
because it's something that you have outgrown. It's something that you already understand, but now you're never looking back on that. So you are welcoming the light. You are welcoming the darkness in very wise way, graceful ways this month, which, which makes you a very balanced individual. And it's not about like this ridiculous way of trying to obsess over balance. It is about the bigger aspect, the bigger comprehension of what a balanced life is. This is where you're headed. I'm receiving a message for someone. I feel like I have to honor it. Unless you do something with your potential, well, potential doesn't really exist. Unless you do something with your potential, does it really exist? This is what I'm getting for someone. Do whatever you want with it. Let's see what the moon has to say for Virgo. I have goosebumps everywhere right now. Balance, spirituality, and practicality. This is exactly what I would say seeing the queen of pentacles and hangman next to each other. So this month is about balancing spirituality and practicality. Yes, there's a new schedule. Yes, there's a new day-to-day. -day. More abundance, more showing up, more movement. It could be more money, more of a lot of things. So you want to make sure that you also cultivate the inner world. Because yeah, you have the Queen of Pentacles. Again, it's all about cultivating but we also have the queen of cups. So you're cultivating the inner and outer world. You cannot suppress feelings anymore. You cannot put your spiritual life on pause anymore. It is all connected. And we have at the bottom of the deck, communication is key, which to me is and will always be the lover's card. Communication is key. Again, find that person. Find that person that you can say whatever you want to. The person that won't judge you. And I would say if, as I'm saying this, you're like, well, I don't have anyone. I just have my diary. And you might find someone this month who you feel you can share anything with. And there's going to be the honoring of that and the recognition of that clearly with the cards that I'm seeing here. Because the two of cups and the lover's card, yeah, there's the sense of the soulmate in the mirror. It's always about you first. We have to stop giving our power away with the tarot. What a bunch of BS it is that when I see people picking the lover's card to have cut, they're like, oh, well, love is showing up in your life. Love is already in your life. And it's not about other people. It's about us seeing that love and beauty within ourselves first, which sounds very cliche and a little cheesy because it's the truth, you know? The things that are kind of always feeling, you know, so basic and cliche, it's because it's real and it's universal. It's like loving a, a certain rock band, let's say. I don't know why this is coming up, but let's say Nirvana. Like, I think everyone on the planet loves Nirvana or loves at least one song. So it feels almost cheesy to say, well, of course, Nirvana is one of my favorite bands. Of course, but it's because it's universal. It's because it's so loved and it's so collective that we associate that as cheesy. But it starts with yourself first. And I don't know how, why, <laughs> and how this came through. Um, in life, I connect everything with music, so it makes sense. But I think you know what I'm saying. So again, communication is key, balance, spirituality, and practicality. 
the both side of the coin, both side. There's no disconnect between your spiritual work and your day-to-day -day work. And I think you're about to really understand that in September. I'm sending so much love. Happy birthday to all my Virgo sons. I celebrate you all year long, but this is your season. And let's make the best out of it together. Remember to subscribe and join me next Tuesday for your session. Thank you, Virgo. Bye-bye.